This is what happens when they actually listen to us. A tool that can outrun the competition twice its price. Not because of raw horsepower. They did out there. watching. But because it's crafted with necessities. A vulture. And when it comes to those needs, every compromise affects our ability to create. And this camera allows me to do exactly that. Create with no compromises. Lumix S52X. I've used this camera on everything from commercial western shoots to, you know, narrative short film type things, all the way down to Rambler series like YouTube videos. I wanted to take this opportunity to, to like, you know, basically share with you guys how this camera has become my most used camera. It comes down to a few things that we'll go over. All right, guys, let's start with feature one. There's a lot of uh, cinema cameras out there that don't include waveforms or shutter angle. To be fair, I love those other cameras. They're great. They have their own strengths. Not having those in a camera that you know is going to be heavily used for video is kind of just outrageous. That's why 2X has those. Shutter angle is very important because if you're going between 60 frames per second, 48 frames per second, 24 frames per second, there's multiple jobs where you're having to switch back and forth. Shutter angle just keeps it locked. You don't have to worry about changing your shutter speed and all that. I always end up messing it up. It's like there's so much stuff going on that we have to think about and remember and shutter angle just, you know, it makes our jobs easier. Aside from that, waveforms there's a lot of cameras out there that are trying to classify themselves as video cameras and again they're great cameras but without waveforms you have to either rely on a histogram which you know is fine those can work or zebras which once again zebras can work but you're not really seeing what's going on with your exposure we have waveforms in this that should be like a staple future if you're going to call your camera a cinema camera or if you know your camera is going to be heavily used for video work We have two base ISOs, 1640, which personally I love because that allows me, uh, you know, to get a little bit creative with anamorphics if I choose to shoot wide open during daytime with less ND issues. From my experience, the 4000 holds up. I, I feel like it's a really good zone to where there's sometimes if you're at 12,800, you still need to use ND, which is fine. You know, we usually have them on us, uh, but 4000 is kind of not too bright and not too low. So you're able to kind of stretch it, especially if you have faster lenses. And it comes for stuff like this. They're squeezing a lot of quality out of your, like your standard MOV H.265 Kodak, or it might be even be H.264, but it's 10 bit. So when I'm doing stuff like this, I'm totally okay with just, you know, letting it roll. Records to SD cards, which personally, I still love SD cards over anything else because they're just, whether they go straight in my laptop, uh, I can put them into a dongle and an iPad. They're just easier. Like everything has SD card support. All right guys, we've been going back and forth a lot on this shoot. I don't know why Jergo made a joke that it's always like that, but I feel like it's usually not like this, but our next shot, we decided to just go full narrative on uh, another video that I'm filming here. And I, I still don't get why you have both of those cameras. I, I feel like you're just shooting the same thing, like film and digital, what, what's the point? Again, you're just a like a hater, but I'm gonna build this camera back out. Again, I was trying to film myself do some stuff and it was working out, but for this narrative stuff, I just wanna put an external uh, V mount on it. I just want to build it out just so we could put it in and out, put it back on the on the tripod and just, you know, not have to fidget with it too much. Uh, and while doing so, I'm going to build the camera out. We'll also go over how this camera has kind of become a chameleon for my workflow and how these three features have just like opened up the floodgates to allowing me to like execute these ideas that I have. Guys, I'm a little scared because uh, Jericho's known for breaking things and he's awfully close to that. Atlas Mercury set up back there. Did you hear me? He can't hear me. You guys can though. Oh fuck. Jeez, oh, I, oh, I hate you so much. That actually got, we're in Tonopah, Nevada. 
Um, one thing that I love about this camera, obviously you can do this with any camera, but specifically with this, um, I'm gonna rig it down. I'm gonna just throw it on a model pop, anamorphic. And that's important to say because the fact that I can do de-stretch in camera on the screen, I don't have to bring in any external monitors. I don't have to do any wireless transmission. I don't have to do any of that. I could do it all through the screen. It de-stretches on here. Now, some of the other camera companies are, are finally starting to trickle out some anamorphic support, but when they do it, they 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 just, they mess it up every time. So on here, we have every de-stretch option from like 1.33 all the way up to like 2x and everything in between again pretty much every other manufacturer that's introducing anamorphic support they put like one to three different options it's like why why the hell even put anamorphic support in there if you're not going to do all the options because there's so many affordable amazing anamorphics coming out whirling tonopah has kind of crushed my heart a little bit because there's so much stuff to photograph here but i'm gonna put this town in my back pocket for now for another time because we are on a mission and yesterday evening, we failed hard. Literally, Jericho and I were laughing about this. Every decision I've made for this trip has been the wrong decision. Like, it has, it has not failed. Uh, but I think we finally got it figured out. So we're, we're, again, we're on a mission. I'm ready to fucking take care of business. Stone Cold Steve Austin, brother. JK, guys, we're actually going back into town because we need gas. <laughs> and then, Stone Cold Steve Austin, brother. Then we'll make the right decisions, right? <laughs> right after that. Yeah, that was the last wrong decision. <laughs> that was the last one. If you guys ever meet any of the engineers or the marketing or just any of the team behind at Lumix, they're listening to everything that we're saying and they hear us out and they know why we need these features. Even something as small as this, they give us a little notch in the battery door right here. So if you use a dummy battery and a V-mount, it basically allows the cable to be able to stay out of there. Condor Blue Matte Box. No, this video is not sponsored by Condor Blue. They just have great stuff. On the back here, we have the Condor Blue battery plate. This thing is sick because I have a kill switch here. So if I don't want to drain the battery at all, I could just kill that. We also have multiple USB-C ports. The newer small rig battery, we have double the USB-C port. I have four USB-C PD power delivery USB-C ports on this little setup here. Pretty sick. All right, guys, obviously this video is sponsored by Lumix, but don't get it twisted. I have a lot of cameras. I use a lot of different tools, but again, this camera just keeps stealing the show for me. There's a lot of moments where it's like, oh, I could do like 8K raw with this camera. It'll look great. But then I'm like, but it doesn't have open gate. It doesn't have like the waveform. It doesn't, you know, the menus aren't as easy or intuitive or the list goes on again. It's these futures that we keep screaming that we want from other camera manufacturers. We have it in this camera. Like it's, it's simple. So guys, you can see we are now on a whole nother setup once again. We are now on a gimbal um, and you'll notice we have an anamorphic lens on here. Again, there's pretty much no other camera to where you're going to get full internal anamorphic support. Somehow they figured out the IBIS algorithms to work with anamorphic. If you ever did regular IBIS with anamorphics, it makes it super warpy because sensors read out vertically. When you're de-stretching, that jello gets increased even more. So IBIS goes and it just ruins that even more. So they figured out a way to tune the IBIS to work with anamorphic. Side note, Panasonic actually has some of the best IBIS out there. You're getting that also with anamorphic support. On top of that, that will lead us into our next next point and that is full frame open gate support like there's the only other camera that i think about that's in this price range is the black magic uh, but that camera is honestly is a little bit of a nightmare to use in these type of conditions this form factor the, the weight the size the layout again that's why this camera started to become like my workhorse because those few features like it just opened up the heavens for me to really you know do that anamorphic filmmaking uh, but on top of that again we already went over it waveforms shutter angle like all that kind of stuff so uh let support like it, it goes on and on and on just again everything we're always asking for this camera does it guys plot twist jericho has also been filming this whole video on another s52x 
We've been running two this whole time and we've been jumping back and forth. So one, we always had kind of on sticks and just rigged the heck out. Wireless setup on here, wireless focus system, a V-mount battery, like the whole nine yards. You guys already saw this rig in another part of the video, but we would either jump between this, we would either rig this one down, put an Atlas Mercury on it or a Blazar Remus. And then we would come back, either do a gimbal setup a handheld setup with the Focus Pro stuff on there. That's what Jericho is kind of running with the whole time. This is actually Jericho's first time using a Panasonic, let alone the yeah. S52X. Yeah. What do you think? I am amazed with how many things I wish I was like, oh, I hope they have this. And then they did. And looking at this camera, it's pretty unassuming, but it just was able to do everything I needed it to, to do. So Jericho hasn't been able to use the open gate with the spherical lens yet. We did use a spherical lens for a lighting breakdown. Ooh, yes, we did. Yeah. Heard when you uh, get up to that line and it hits you with the EMP and it knocks out all of your electronics. So check out what I bought. Did you seriously buy it? The footage we shot last night that we edited together yeah. What do you think? That was pretty uh, confidence building because last night we were just shooting in an old hotel room. The combination of the, the anamorphics and just the sensor and the dynamic range, we were able to really get some good stuff. I thought it looked great. Using this, we ran it on sticks, on gimbal, and like handheld, super broken down. You were able to just move this camera like a Swiss army knife between all the different types of things you might need to film when you're being incredibly chaotic because we don't know what we're doing out here, but we are making something. This is also a testament to uh, Jericho's skill set, but also the fact that this was his first time using a Lumix camera and the S52X and, you know, he was easily able to just like catch on and start using it. The waveforms. Yeah, waveforms are nice. Super helpful. Very nice. The anamorphic support. He doesn't shoot a whole lot of anamorphic yet. Maybe we'll get him to shoot more. Soon. I, maybe I'll let him borrow a lens with his FX30 just so he can see why the internal anamorphic support is so important for stuff like this. We'll see on that end. Again, this, this camera's kind of wild because it can cover everything for beginners, amateurs, whatever you want to call them, all the way to how I just use them on pro work. I will say my only gripe with this camera, which it's only in certain scenarios, the rolling shutter can be a bit intense, especially when you're pairing it up with anamorphic. You can have the fastest uh, shutter out there, and if there's any rolling shutter, anamorphic's going to heighten it. So anytime shooting like action pack, fast paced stuff, you can kind of see that rolling shutter, but everything else that this camera has, I could care less about that. All those other features where pretty much no other mirrorless camera has those features. It might have one, might have two, might have like a half-baked feature of that feature, but the fact that this camera just has everything that person that I need, that I know a lot of other people need, that's just kind of, again, day after day why I end up picking this up over other cameras that are literally two to three to four times as much as it, which is crazy.